Hi guys, so today I'm giving you a video on uh, the basics of X-Wing and I've been making videos for a long time but it occurred to me that I've never really done a how to play X-Wing or a real beginner's video so if you're not familiar with X-Wing, if you're not familiar with uh, the flight path system or any of Fantasy Flight Games videos, this is a great starting point and uh, if you like what you see I have plenty more videos on my channel so be, feel free to check them out. Uh, to start off, X-Wing is a miniatures game uh, it's primarily a 1v1 game, but it can be played in teams, and it, it can be modified to allow kind of free-for-all multiplayer. So three people can play, four people can play, like a free-for-all. But it's kind of designed and works best when it's one side versus another side. Say, Rebels versus Imperials. Uh, if you're interested in playing, one of the things you'll need is you'll need a core set. Um, what I'm showing you here is the X-Wing Miniatures game core set from The Force Awakens. There is also a version like this from the original movies that has red text instead of blue text. But they're both very similar. Uh, if you really like the game, I would encourage you eventually to get both. But for, for demonstration purposes, I'm going to be going with the, uh, the Force Awakens core set just to kind of show you um, some of the components and give you an overview of how the game is played. Now, first thing we're going to do is we're going to take a look at the components of this game. Uh, now in a core set you're going to get an X-Wing and you're going to, it's a T-70 X-Wing and you're going to get two TIE Fighters. They're first order TIE Fighters uh, and one of the things that's really great about this game is how incredibly detailed these miniatures are. Uh, they're just gorgeous and one of the things that I l used to love as a kid was Micro Machines for both Star Trek and Star Wars and any kind of sci-fi Micro Machines and I loved them and the, what, the greatest thing about this game is that even if I ever stop playing someday, I'm going to be able to just hold on to these fantastic miniatures for, for as long as I live. So it's a great investment uh, because it's art. And the paint jobs are fantastic. The sculpting is just pristine. Um, you're also going to get these, uh, these bases. And these bases are come in pieces, so you'll have a little square. And that represents the base. Uh, you can have some pegs. You can put one or two or three or as many pegs as you want in there. Uh, you'll have a cardboard insert, and we'll talk a little bit more about the cardboard inserts and the stats of each ship that are on them. And then your ship is going to go on top. So, and this is basically how it'll look once your ship is assembled and ready to fly. Uh, and so I've already done another TIE fighter right here, as you can see. So, uh, you're also going to get these cards. Uh, now these cards, we're going to talk a little bit more about those in a minute. You're going to have uh, you're going to have a card for every ship that you're going to fly. You'll also have a maneuver dial. Now these maneuver dials are very interesting because there's two key parts to playing X-wing: is moving and shooting. So uh, the maneuver dial, you set your maneuver dials in secret and then put them face down when you're ready. And then when all players have set their dials face down, you flip them up in pilot skill order, and then you'll begin to move. Now moving is done with this flight path system. So if you look, uh, I don't know if you can see it too well here, but on these bases there are these two little uh, little uh, nipples here, basically, that come out. And it uses this flight path system where they ha you have these little rulers. So the flight path system, I'll basically take my two little divots here and ass assume uh, my ship is doing a five forward, all right? I will take the five straight, and there are there are multiple different templates. I've got three turns, two turns, one turn. The number represents the, the speed or how far you're going. The, the bigger the number, the farther you're going. Um, and we'll reveal, and as, if I was going to do a five forward maneuver, I would slide the five into the right flush against the, the base, right in between these two little nipples there. And then it has them on the back as well, and then it would and I would do the same thing on the other side. And so this ship had just moved as fast as it possibly could. Now, five forward is the fastest move in the game. We have four, threes, twos, and ones. And then we have turns, which are 90 degree turns, uh, threes, twos, and ones. And then we have banks, which are like uh, 45 degree turns, threes, twos, and ones. So you're going to have, and each of these can go either direction. So let's say this first order TIE fighter were to set a you know a two turn it would then find the the two turn template and then make sure it corresponds to the direction that you're going to go 
line it in there, and then hold it down. Now one of the things that you try to do when you play this game is you try to move with precision. So, well, if, you're, if you've been playing for a while, you will typically hold your, your piece down so it doesn't, so you don't push it around. Because a lot of beginners will just take this and put it in there and it'll, it'll bump it around all over the place. And where you end up is important because these, uh, you know, these bases have firing arcs on them. So I'm going to talk a little bit about the cards and the bases. So uh, right here you'll see a Red Squadron veteran card. And you're going to notice first the first number is the pilot skill. In this case it's a four. And that basically represents the order in which you move and shoot. Everybody moves and shoots based on their pilot skill. Uh, the lowest numbers will move first, and then the highest numbers will move last. And then when it comes to shooting, shooting happens after moving, the highest numbers will then shoot first, and the lowest numbers will shoot last. Uh, there is an advantage uh, in being able to move last, uh, but there are also some advantages in being able to move first. So uh, it's kind of a double-edged sword, but it's uh, usually the higher pilot skill always has a clear advantage, especially when it comes to shooting first, because if you blow up your opponent, usually they can't shoot you back. There are a few exceptions to that, uh, but that's more for an advanced gameplay. All right, uh, now we get into these other stats below. Uh, the first number is a uh, red number, and that represents the attack value. That's how many dice you're going to roll when you attack. And you're going to attack with these eight-sided dice that come with the game. You're going to get three attack dice, in your, in your core set, you're also going to get three defense dice, which is the very next number, uh, as how many defense dice you roll, the green number, okay? And uh, once, we, once we complete this, I'm going to talk about combat and what the dice mean and what you, know, what you roll and how you can modify those dice. Uh, Alright, so um, the next number down is your hull. Now this is a yellow number, and uh, oh, there it is. So your hull represents how many hits you can take. In the case of the X-Wing, it can take three damage directly to its hull. Now, some ships have shields, which is the blue number, below them. Now, shields are very, very good because any damage you take is going to go to shields first. Once your shields are depleted, then damage will go to your hull. So, um, think of this X-Wing as having three shields and three hull. Think of it as actually having six health. You know, if, if it were a, a game with hit points or health, it would essentially have six health. It could take six hits before it dies. But there are some distinctions between shield and hull. Um, sometimes stuff can regenerate shields. Sometimes uh, you'll get a, a critical hit. And a critical hit, uh, if it goes to shields, only re removes a shield. But if it goes to hull, you, it, it's much more damaging. So there are some distinctions between shields and hull, but in the simplest terms, just to get you started, think of them as hit points. Um, all right, and now we, we, also have some, we also have some symbols here. This is what's called the action bar, okay? The action bar shows you three symbols, and, and, and every ship is going to have an action bar, and different ships have different symbols. So look at the TIE Fighter, for example. The TIE Fighter has more uh, things that it can do, and those are actions, okay? So, um, you know, this one right here, the eyeball, that means focus, and that's the kind of a standard action. That means you could, ta you, ha you could take a focus as your action. The middle one is a target lock symbol. It means you could take a target lock as your action. And the last one is a, uh, something called boost, which is a, a maneuverability-based action. So after, you, after a ship moves, it has the opportunity to take an action as long as it hasn't bumped into anything. Uh, so that's... Uh, that's one of the things that you do. So the action bar basically tells you what actions are available to your ship. Um, and then at the bottom we have a couple more things. At the bottom we have uh, an upgrade bar. And this kind of shows what types of upgrades are available to ships. Um, there are These are upgrades are smaller cards that you can put on your ships. Basically they are upgrades. Uh, they could be anything from a proton torpedo to an astromech droid, like maybe you want to fly with R2-D2, or maybe you want to fly with BB-8, or maybe you want to fly without an astromech. Uh, they increase the point cost of your ship, though, so they, they are not without, they, you know, they have pros and cons. Uh, the last number in the bottom corner here is your, uh, your, your point cost. Now, the X-Wing is a, you know, it, it is a game that has point costs associated with it. 
A standard game is usually what's called a 100 point game. And so what that means is, if, for example, if this ship is 26, I could not bring four of them because that would put me at over 100 points. That would be 104 points. So what you have to do is you have to bring 100 points or less to the battle and you will each set up with 100 points on one side, 100 points on the other side. Now that's a standard game, that's kind of a tournament level game. Uh, you can play with whatever point limit you want. If you just get the core set, you're probably only going to play like a 30 or 35 point game because you're not going to have that many cards, you're not going to have that many things available to you to fill up 100 points. So it's for be beginners, you know, it, and also uh, if you're just getting started, it, the points really don't matter. You just, you know, it, it's important to know though that TIE Fighters aren't aren't balanced against an X-Wing. For example, this guy is only 15 points, this TIE Fighter. And these points kind of represent the relative power in the game. So this ship right here represents 15 points. Uh, the X-Wing is 26 points. And now that's, you know, that, that's represented in a couple of different ways. For one, the X-Wing has more, it rolls more attack dice. So it's got bigger guns. Uh, it also has two more shields than the other, than the TIE Fighter. So it's a, a tougher ship and it hits harder. Um, so, so it's it's supposed to be a little bit more expensive, and that's one of the reasons they give you two Tie Fighters in the core set because two Tie Fighters is roughly balanced against one X-wing. So, uh, but this is also reflected in the point cost. Now you can tweak these things a little bit if you want to experiment with some upgrades, but that's that's basically what the what the card means, what the what the upgrades mean. Now when we're looking at here, I'm going to take this ship off and I'm going to show you the the, uh, the dial or I'm sorry the the plastic insert a little bit so this plastic insert has a lot of that same information on it, uh, it but it, one thing that's different here is it has these the, like a V at the top right now what that means that is your firing arc so this ship can only shoot basically stuff that's in front of it now why is that important well we've talked about you're going to move and you're going to shoot. So if these two ships are flying at each other, they each have the same, and, and almost every ship in the game has this forward firing arc. It's a pretty standard arc. Um, if these ships are flying towards each other and they turn, and let's say they end up like this, well, the TIE Fighter, and we use this the range ruler here, oh, and this is another piece that you get, this range ruler. It's got one, two, and three on it. Okay, the other side is just a different color, but they both mean the same thing. It's just whatever if you want, if you like light side or dark side, right? Um, but you, you can we will use these range ruler to kind of determine what's in range, you know. And uh, so this Tie Fighter doesn't have this uh, X-wing in his firing arc, but the X-wing he does have the Tie Fighter in his firing arc. And so that's what some people, and if you play this game long enough too, some people will actually use lasers. There's laser levels that people will bring. Um, but yeah, that's, that's getting kind of advanced. Uh, so so this, is, uh, this range finder is very important. It's, it helps you to see who's in arc. It also tells you what range something is. That's hence the one, the two, and the three. So if these guys were going at each other and they were this close, and I could see that they were within the the you know where the, the range ruler starts and the line for one we would say that they are at range one of each other and when you're measuring you always go closest point to closest point so for example here the farthest point would be past one so it would be in range two but we're going to measure the closest point in range one if they're farther away this they they might be at range two and if they were yet even further away we might say that they were in range three from each other um, and if they were even further away, if they were beyond range three from each other, then we would say that they're out of range. So what does that mean? Well, first off, in order to shoot another ship, you have to be at least within range three. Uh, the, there are other things that are required as well. You have to also have them in arc. So you have to both have them in range and in arc. Um, so in this case, these ships would not be able to shoot each other. Um, uh, if you are at range three and you're firing, the defender, because he's so far away, he gets a bonus to his defense dice. He gets to add an extra die. So the TIE Fighter, for example, has three agility. That means he could roll three dice. 
Well, if he's defending at range three, he gets to roll an extra die. The X-Wing is attacking him, but he's harder to hit. So it's always harder to hit an enemy ship that's at range three. Uh, range two, there are no bonuses. Okay. Now at range one, when you're attacking, the attacker gets to roll an extra red die. Because in other words, your, your enemy is so close to you, it's easier to hit. So your attack's going to hit a little bit stronger. So whereas the X-Wing would normally roll three dice, uh, he gets to add an extra die and then roll four. So let's talk about these dice. Okay, what does, the, what, what does the attack and defense mean? Well, here's how an attack would normally go. And, and for simplistic purposes, I'm going to use uh, a range two attack. So let's say the X-Wing is going to shoot. Now, let's say these ships ended up this way. They're both going to get to shoot each other. But remember, um, shooting happens from highest pilot skill to lowest pilot skill. So the X-Wing will shoot first. Now, he, his attack value is three. So first thing he does is figure out how many dice he's going to roll. He's going to roll three dice because his attack value is three. If his attack value is two, for example, he would roll two dice. Um, so he's going to roll three dice, and he gets... You know, there, are, there are multiple different symbols on these dice. Okay. Um, first, there is a blank. Blank is the easiest to describe because it means nothing. Nothing happens. Um, the other symbol you have is, called, is an eyeball. Now, this eyeball symbol effectively means nothing. We'll talk about these eyeball symbols in a little bit when we get to actions, because these can be modified if you take a focus action. Uh, the next symbol is a hit, which is a solid little blast. Okay, And then the rarest is a critical hit, which has is a hollow blast. There's only one of these on this die. Okay, So let's say we rolled a blank, a hit, and a crit. Okay, well that's lovely. Well, that's now the defender gets to roll his defense dice. Attacker rolls his dice first. Now the defender gets to roll. Now the defender. Let's look at the defense dice. We also have blanks. Uh, we also have that same eyeball symbol. Now that eyeball symbol is, exists on both dice. And then we have this little evade symbol. All right. So let's say we rolled two blanks and one evade in this particular case well now we now we match up our dice okay now the ev evades will cancel hits now an evade always cancels regular hits first critical hits are always canceled last in other words they're also the most likely to make it through um, in this case we've rolled one evade and that will cancel the one hit but the critical will make it through um, we would have had to roll at least two evades to cancel both the hit and the crit. If, for example, we had rolled two hits and a crit, we would have needed to roll three evades to cancel the crit. So, um, so that's another thing about critical hits. They are, they're more likely to go through. Now, another thing you'll get in your starter box is the damage deck. Now, every player in, an, in a game needs to have their own damage deck. Although if you're doing a team game and you're playing casually your first game, it's fine to share. But uh, when you play more standard games with people, you, everybody will have their own damage deck. Now, these da this damage deck uh, is used to deal damage cards. So assuming that you had no more shields and damage goes through, you will assign damage cards to a ship to indicate how many, time, how many times it's taken damage. Um, and then this is where the hull comes in, okay? Because you will have, you'll have some shield tokens, okay? Um, the, the TIE Fighter here, the First Order TIE Fighters, have one shield. So, like on our ship card, we would put this little token here on top of our ship card. So the first damage he takes, we'll just remove a shield. The second damage he takes, we'll put a, a damage card on him. If he takes three damage, we'll put three damage cards on him, so on and so forth. Now, if a critical damage gets by the shields and actually goes to hull, instead of dealing a damage card, we, f we, we deal that card and then flip it over. And now the flipping over card always has disastrous effects. So, like, for example, you have the direct hit, which this one counts as two damage instead of just one. So that's a really bad, bad thing. We have other things like damaged cockpit, and, it, and they'll some, some things will reduce your stats, or some things will make you not be able to attack, or not be able to go straight when you're doing your maneuver next turn. So it's, there are all kinds of very nasty effects that you'll find on the bottom of these uh, dam damage cards, and every card has something nasty on the other side of it. 
So you really don't want your opponent to critically hit your ship. Uh, so, all right. So we talked about um, kind of what combat is. Let's talk about actions. Okay. So let's say these two ships right here are are pl are going to do their maneuvers. Well, let's say the X-wing is going to he's going to do a reveal a war, one forward, and the Tie Fighter is going to do a two forward. All right. So we've all set our dials. We're going to reveal lowest pilot skill moves first. The TIE Fighter is going to do a two forward. I'm just walking through the steps here because after you move, if you haven't hit anything, because there are sometimes there'll be asteroids on the field, right? And you don't want to hit those. They do bad things to you. Uh, if you haven't hit anything and you don't have stress, which there are moves that will give you stress, we'll talk about those in a minute, you can take an action. Now, this TIE Fighter could evade and we'll put a little evade symbol on it. Or he could focus instead of that. He might decide he wants to focus, and we'll put a focus symbol on him. Or he wants to barrel roll. Barrel roll is a cool little action that lets him maneuver. It lets him take the one straight maneuver and put it on the side of his ship, and then he can go that way. If and maybe there was something in front of him, he didn't want to be there, right? Um, but a lot of these actions do different things. The evade is, is something you, it lasts until the end of the turn, and if you want, you can spend it to add one extra evade symbol to a defense roll. So if somebody hits you with three hits, and you only roll you know, two, two evades, and you need another one, well, you can spend your evade token to make, bring that up to a three. So you it would dodge all three. So evade is good for that, especially if you think you're going to get attacked and you're afraid you're going to get destroyed. Um, the focus symbol... And this is the most common one in the game. If you're new to the game, uh, focus is never a bad option. So you almost almost always want to focus it until you get the hang of all of the actions and what all they do. Because what focus does, and this is a token, any of these tokens, you, you have to spend them, and it means you pick them up. Um, a focus will change all of your eyeball symbols to evades or hits, depending on which... You're, if you're defending or if you're attacking. So what focus means is it can be spent on attack or defense. Um, so if you're attacking and let's say you roll a hit and two eyeballs, well you can spend your focus to turn all eyeballs to the appropriate symbol. So you can use those to make, to, to make uh, you know, all your eyeballs hits. Or if you're using them for defense, you can spend your focus to make all your eyeballs evades. Now one of the things that's great about this is the versatility that it gives you. It, see as a pilot skill one I would probably take a focus here because I, I know that if I get shot I can spend that focus potentially to turn some eyeballs into evades. Um, now if I get shot and I don't need to spend that well then I can also spend that for for offense. So it can keep me alive for defense and then if I don't need to spend it it can help me hit harder on offense. So in this case, I'm doing like a simulated round here, I'll take a focus with this TIE Fighter. Now the X-Wing moves next. Uh, he's going to do a one forward. So I put, put the little one forward maneuver in front of him. And I move him in front, lock it in there, it's nice and tight. I pull this away. Alright, now he's done, he hasn't bumped anything. Uh, he doesn't have a stress. And he is, he could take a, uh, a focus as well, but in this case, he's going to take a target lock on the TIE Fighter. Whoops. And so target lock is an action that he can take, um, and you have these little, you'll get these little target lock um, tokens. Now they'll have a number, or a letter rather, on them. Uh, and so they'll be double-sided, like this one is E and F. Alright, so I'll take the E, I'll take the blue E, assign it to my guy, and the red E, and assign it to the ship I'm target locking. This means I have a target lock on that ship. Now, target lock has a couple of uses. As some, you know, if you have a proton torpedo or something, you might need a target lock to fire that, but it'll say that on the card. But as a base action, what target lock lets me do is it lets me reroll any number of dice when I spend it. I can pick it up and spend it to reroll any number of dice for offense only. So if I were at range two and I rolled 
two hits and a blank, actually that's a good example. I could spend the target lock to just re-roll the blank. Kind of like if you're playing Yahtzee, you can leave some down and then re-roll the rest. Um, and so the good thing about target lock is you have a pretty good chance of maximizing your attack with it. Um, it also can has a chance to get you crits. If you really want to get critical hits, you have the chance to, because you could always re-roll and, and, and get a crit. Um, whereas a focus can't ever give you a crit. But at the same time, target lock doesn't do anything for defense. So if I happen to roll three hits the first time, and I don't need to spend my target lock, well then I get nothing for, uh, for defense. So target lock is a good... Uh, Offensive action, but offensive only, whereas focus is multi-purpose. So if you're playing this game, you may want to just take a focus every time you have the opportunity. So um, I mentioned stress here. So uh, let me talk about stress. So stress are these little triangles. And what they do, what it means is if your pilot performs a stressful maneuver, or what we call a red maneuver. So the X-Wing has, uh, on his dial, it has different colored maneuvers. It has green, white, and red maneuvers. Uh, every ship, you, just about every ship has green, white, and red maneuvers. Now, a red maneuver is a more difficult maneuver that's going to put some stress on the ship. So, this one is called a K-turn, and it's a four K-turn. And what, it, what you'll do with the K-turn, or a Koya Grand maneuver, is you'll do it like you're doing a four straight, and if you can complete it, then you turn your ship around. So you're just doing a kind of like a U-turn, but it's called the Koya Grand Maneuver, and uh, it's in space, right? So we just call it a K-turn for short. Now, this X-Wing also has some different red maneuvers as well. Um, it also has the Talon Roll, which I'll explain here in a minute. Now, once we've completed that maneuver, we assign a stress token to the ship, so we can put that right next to the ship to indicate that he's stressed. Now, stress means a couple of things. For one, now we've completed our maneuver, and, uh, we didn't bump anything, we can't take an action. So stress means, when you have a stress token, you cannot take actions. So I can't take a focus, or a target lock, or boost. Um, but one of the things I uh, have to keep in mind is that when I'm doing my next maneuver, um, when you're stressed, you also cannot perform Red, manu uh, red maneuvers, and there's a there's a, a rule that says if you illegally do set a red maneuver, then you have to give your dial to your opponent, and they get to pick your maneuver for you. So, and that, they could fly you right off the board. You definitely don't want to do that. So we'll, what we, what you want to do is you want to either do a white or a green maneuver after you if you have stress. Now white maneuvers don't have any consequences. They're normal run of the mill maneuvers. What you want to do if you have stress is you want to do a green maneuver. Green maneuvers are easy maneuvers, and they're usually your slowest maneuvers. Uh, that green maneuvers, once you complete a green maneuver, uh, you will you'll do that. And if it was a green maneuver, you get to remove one stress token from your ship. If for some reason you had two or three stress, you would only remove one. But uh, now you could take an action if that way you're only stressed and you did a green maneuver. So that's what the color set means. Red maneuver gives you a stress. White maneuver does nothing. Green maneuver removes a stress. All right. All right. So that's kind of the basics of movement and uh, and combat. So now I want to take you through a kind of a mock setup of a game and uh, and how it would basically work. So. What I have here is I have a three by three, a three foot by three foot play mat. This is one that actually is sold by Fantasy Flight Games. It's a Starfield mat. You don't have to play on one of these play mats. You can play on any surface. You can play on a kitchen table. You can play wherever you want. But now an official tournament game is done on a three foot by three foot play surface. And the game is kind of balanced for that. Um, but again, it's up to you however you want to play. If you end up playing you know, in game stores and with other people, uh, you're probably going to play 100 point games and you're probably going to play on a 3x3 three three play mat. Uh, but you don't have to. You can play however you want. Uh, this is just kind of the standard. So one of the things you do is you'll take your range ruler and you'll set it right all the way up against the edge of your board. Now the line for range 1 is as far forward as you can initially deploy your ships. Okay. Now you're going to deploy based in uh, pilot skill order. 
Uh, so the lowest number is going to deploy first. So this TIE fighter being a 1 would deploy first. Um, in a casual game, the Imperial player gets what's called initiative. And that means they go first on anything that's a tie. So if, if uh, not a tie like a TIE fighter, but a tie like an even. If you had a 1 and I had a 1, you would do everything first. And I would do all my 1s separate or second. Um, you're also going to have obstacles. Now, um, each player in a standard game or a tournament level game is going to bring three obstacles with them. Um, however, if you're just playing casual, it doesn't matter whose they belong to. But typically, you're going to have six obstacles on a 3x3 three three play mat. Um, and so you can place them wherever you want. They have to be at least ranged two from the sides and from any given side. And then they have to be at least ranged one from each other. So we make sure that they're at least ranged one from each other. And I'm just going to kind of simulate. We would go back and forth. He would do one, then I would do one, then he would do one, then I would do one, so on and so forth. So that's kind of what our star field looks like. Now, these um, asteroids, you don't want to hit those. If, you're, if you fly through one and your template hits one, you lose your action and you have to roll and you take damage based on what this comes up. If you hit a crit or a hit, you take damage. Um, and if you, get not, if you don't, you take no damage. And that's basically you hit some debris as you were flying through. You don't want to do that. Uh, if you land on an asteroid, you have to do the same thing, but you also now can't shoot. So, uh, so that's even worse. So that's uh, so you don't want to land on asteroids. And then debris clouds are very similar, but um, you can shoot. They don't stop you from being able to shoot, but they give you a stress. Um, and also, you still roll, but you only take damage if it's a crit. Um, but, but that's. Uh, you don't have to play with obstacles either. You can, for your first game, you can play without any obstacles. You don't have to put any of this stuff on the board. But that's kind of how a game would go. Um, so we would deploy those. Now we would deploy ships based on pilot skill order. The TIE might want to deploy on the outside here. He'll deploy right as far forward as he can at range one. And now that I know where he is, this is the time where pilot skill has an advantage. I don't have to deploy straight at him. I'm going to deploy like at an angle because you don't have to deploy straight, but I can't. I got to make sure that my corner here doesn't go past this line, so I'll push him back a little bit and I'll deploy on a little bit of an angle. And I'm kind of cut, and now we would go. All right, this is the way a normal turn of the game would work. We'll say, okay, we're all deployed, we're set. Dials. So we'll each each player will set their dials to figure out what they're going to do. And they'll set it face down. You can set it next to your ship, or you can set it on your ship card. Okay. And also, we would put shield tokens on our sh cards as well. Now, I will, um, I'm not going to put the shield tokens down because we're just going to get play like a mock turn or two to kind of show you how it works. And okay, so I'm, we're all done. Activation, beginning of activation uh, phase. We're going to move in pilot skill order. The lowest are going to move first. He's doing a five forward. What I would do is I would then find the five forward template. Put it up flush against the ship. Move it forward. He'll take an action. He'll take a focus. Like I said, always, always take a focus if you it went in doubt. All right. Then the X-wing. He's doing a three bank to the left. Now these are double sided. So if I was going right, I'd use the same one and just flip it over. And he's going this way. And. Now he's going to take a different action I haven't talked about yet. It's called boost, and it's the one indicated by this uh, this symbol here, which is getting the three-pointed arrow kind of thing. And boost means we can do a one maneuver. We can either go straight, or a one bank left, or a one bank right. Basically, when you're going to do that, you say, "All right, my action is boost," and then you say the direction. I'm going to boost this way, and you have to make sure that it's clear. You can't do it if you're just going to can't boost into another ship, or it can't boost in to hit something. But uh, if it's clear, then, then you can perform that little extra little maneuver. Uh, all right, we're done. Activation is over, beginning of combat. Let's see if we're in range. A lot of times you're not in range after the first turn, but we actually are. And so one of the things I do is I check range here. Now you can only check range if, you, if it's your turn to shoot. So we're, I'm, I'm shooting first because I'm pilot skill four. Remember, then we go from top down. The right, first thing I have to do is check and make sure that he's in my arc. He is in my arc. Um, and now I have to make sure he's within range. Now, 
if, let's say this asteroid was here, if I go from closest point to closest point, it would be obstructed if it went through, if the shot was going to go through this asteroid. That would give him an extra die on top of the range three. So the TIE fighter has three green dice, and I'm shooting in at, I'm going to shoot him at range three, which will give him an extra green die. I take my attack value, which is three, I'm going to roll three dice. I got two eyeballs and a blank. It, had I taken a focus, I could spend the focus and turn that into two hits. Or had I taken a target lock, I could re-roll all three. But I don't have any of those, so my attack actually is not going to generate any hits. He would then get to roll green dice, and he rolls two blanks, an eyeball, and an evade. So if I had rolled three hits, he would uh, cancel one and take two damage, or he could spend his focus to turn this to an evade, or would turn all eyeballs to an evade, but that happened to be the only eyeball, and take that, and then only take one damage. But in this case, he takes no damage. Now, um, I've shot. Now it's his turn to shoot, because we're working our way down the pilot skill. Now, he definitely has me in range, um, and he has me in arc also, although it's very close. Sometimes somebody will be in range, but not in arc. For example, if I was here, he would not have me in arc, as I check the, the line there. But he does, because I was right here. So now he gets to attack me. Now his attack value is 2. He gets to roll 2 attack dice. Now I'm not as maneuverable as him. I only get 2 green dice, but I do get plus 1 for being at range 3. So he's going to roll 2 red dice. Oh, he got 2 hits. Okay. And I'm, I'm not really setting the... I'm just actually rolling these dice. Uh, and I get two eyeballs and an evade. So I, don't, I didn't take a focus. Again, it would have been good here. But uh, yeah, and so the TIE Fighter will hit me for one. I will lose one shield. So I'm down to a three hull and two shields on this guy. And that's the end of the combat step. And now we will do dials one more time. I'll do this one more time just to walk through. Um, end, end of the turn, the, all the green tokens come up. If there's stress, it stays down there. Um, I didn't mention this. If there's a target lock, that actually persists through the next turn. Target locks stay on until they're used. They can stay forever. So, uh, so that's another good thing about target locks. Once you spend it, then it comes up and it's done. So, yeah. Oh, that's, this is a good idea. This is a good idea. Okay, we'll do that. And you're gonna do, oh yes, this is gonna be, Okay. We'll do that. Okay. The uh, we're gonna move in turn order. The tie is going to reveal a Segnor's loop. The Segnor's loop uses the two bank. Well, it, can use, it uses a bank maneuver. In this case, a two bank. Once it completes it, it turns around and gets a stress. Now he doesn't get to take an action for that, because uh, he has a stress. Now the X-Wing here is doing a 4K, and that'll put him right there, and he gets a stress. Now, funny thing about this, neither one of them can shoot each other now, because, as you can see, he doesn't have arc on the TIE Fighter. They are definitely within range, because they're both range 1, but they're not pointed at each other. They don't have arc. Although they, it's close, but they just don't have it. So sometimes that'll happen where you just fly around each other and keep missing each other. Um, but, you know, in, the, in this would happen, you say, alright, combat, combat begins, there's no shots, combat ends, and then you pick up your green tokens if there's any. And so on the following turn, each of these ships would probably want to do a green maneuver to clear their stress and try to eventually get turned around again to shoot each other. And that is basically how X-Wing works. Um, it's a side versus side game. You're gonna, you know, a lot of times people will play teams, uh, especially if you're getting started and you don't have that many ships, you can play two versus two and each person gets maybe their own ship or maybe you'll con control two ships. Uh, maybe somebody will control a larger ship like the Millennium Falcon and then somebody else will control two ships. Um, and, and there's all kinds of expansions and stuff you can get. Um, like this is kind of what a, a single ship expansion looks like. I just happen to have this one and I didn't open it up yet. 
Uh, they're usually about 15 bucks MSRP. Um, sometimes you can find them a little cheaper depending on where you go. Um, miniature market and cool stuff. Uh, both have pretty good deals on you know X-wing expansions. Um, but but absolutely you know if you're if you're thinking about playing it, you know uh, I've got plenty more videos that are I've got some gameplay bat reps that you can watch battle reports. Uh, if there's anything that I covered that doesn't make sense or maybe I went over it too quickly or maybe I left something out that you, or if you just have any questions about X-Wing um, let me know because uh, there are there are more rules but I just some of it's more advanced and I didn't go over everything so so thank you so much for for watching uh, if you like this type of thing I have a lot more videos feel free to subscribe you'll get you know you'll get the uh, the latest videos as they come out um, and, you know, as always, give it a, a thumbs up, a like, and uh, leave a comment, and uh, ask any questions if there's anything I left out. Thank you guys so much for watching. Have a wonderful day.